Yeah, I actually was having a moment of panic and I thought, oh no, what is my husband gonna do? A nice private little campsite around here for us. Fire pit. Quite a bit of distance between us and our neighbors. Yeah, look at the Woods other side. Woods behind us. Look, yeah, look at the other side too. There's a ton of room. Oh yeah, see that's the next one over, so. And this was supposed to be our smallest campsite ever. Yeah, they said the site was only 25 feet wide. I don't get that, but anyway, here we are. We don't get to relax as much as we'd like on weekend trips, and being up all night makes it even more difficult to take advantage of our limited time. That's the view that we were point, trying to point to when we were coming over the bridge last night. It's the beach at Straight State Park. We're just camped up the hill a little ways. We got a little peekaboo view of the water, but not the bridge. It's a beautiful campsite, which you've seen. Yeah, that's okay. You know, we can walk over here and see the beach, and it's shady and yeah. cozy, beautiful back where we're camping. So we have no complaints. Yeah, it's kind of warm and humid, but today, but the the breeze coming off the lake is, is, makes everything worthwhile. And there's amazing <laughs> cell coverage here. Oh yeah. yeah, it's working great. Michelle's able to do, <laughs> keep her business going. And, yeah, you know, I made a that, so. few mistakes as I'm trying to use my phone instead of my laptop, but <laughs> <laughs> but people are usually pretty understanding if you just apologize. Right. Oops. Just, just tell them you are up till 4 in the morning. 4.30. 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> you know, looking at the aurora. For the first time. Yes. It's a recovery day. Yeah. They'll understand. <laughs> yeah. So here I am again without my sweat towel and we lost the breeze, got away from the lake. And it's warm and humid. I can hear the breeze in the trees, but it's not reaching me right now. Yeah. I have a question for you though. Where does this remind you of these trees? <laughs> Mackinac the cedar trees. Island. And what can we see when we're standing right there on the beach? Mackinac Island. Mackinac Island. <laughs> oh boy, look beautiful, at that. Beautiful area. I think somebody's got steps to climb. Oh, it's like you're sweaty now. I know. Why don't you go and run up there and tell me what it looks like? Sure. <laughs> this is our cozy campsite. Yeah. Through the over the river and through the woods. <laughs> Except we're not grandparents. That was so cool. That was very convenient. You couldn't really see that this is a trail from our campsite, but it is. Time for lunch? Yes, please. After lunch, we headed to downtown St. Ignace to try to see the sights and make the most of our day. So where are we? We're at St. Ignace and we're out at the end of one of the docks on the walking tour. Yeah, there's a historic downtown walking tour that goes along the shoreline. It's very pretty out here. Beautiful day. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of old historic type stuff. I never realized how picturesque St. Ignis is. And quite often we just kind of drive through here in a hurry on our way to somewhere else. Right. It's a little bit more popular, well-known or... Well, and also Mackinac City and Mackinac Island sort of get sort of overshadow yeah. St. Ignis a little bit, I think. Right. When he talks about St. Ignis, they all talk about Mackinac. 
Right, but now that we're actually spending a long weekend here, we're able to slow down and take a deep breath and kind of look around a lot more closely. And it's amazing how many fun, cute, historic things there are around here to enjoy. Yeah. This, this current dock we're on is an old rail dock. They used to load rail cars onto big ships yeah. back in the day. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, it is. And there's it's a cool. lighthouse at the end. <laughs> said mooring facilities? Well, I said it was a anchoring anchorage place, but okay. mooring, anchoring, yes. called mooring dolphins. Hmm. Uh, Man-made marine structure that extends above the water level, but it's not connected to shore. Yeah, provided a mooring facility for Great Lakes tanker ships. Yeah. And I figured it was something big, because they're huge. What's this? Well, it's, it's like, it looks like a big sundial. Okay. okay. So, stand on date, your shadow tells the time. So, about 2.30. Okay, is it right? Two twenty nine. I don't know if you can oh, see that. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Who came up with sundial technology anyway? Is that the Egyptians or something? Probably somebody ancient, yeah. They it's, knew what they were doing. So they did. <laughs> Except I've never seen one like this where you have to be on a certain date. But it's a little different. Maybe they well, are. Maybe they're all that yeah, way. Yeah, because the sun, you know, changes position. Changes yeah. position, but you must must be the little triangle in the middle of them. You have to change position based on date. Could be. But you don't have to change the batteries on this clock. No, this one, well, this one works unless it's cloudy. True. <laughs> Doesn't exactly worry about not creating a lake. No. Next, we headed to the Bridgeview Park to see another vantage point of the Mighty Mac. There, we learned that before the bridge existed, people had to take ferries from the Lower Peninsula to the Upper Peninsula. And in the early 1800s, the Michigan Territory actually included not only the Upper Peninsula, but Wisconsin and part of Minnesota as well. So here we are, it's about 5 p.m. the night after staying up all night to see the Aurora. Yeah. How are you doing? Are we recovering? Uh, no. <laughs> no? I'm tired. I'm hitting the wall. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's, yeah, I would do it over again. I wouldn't do it tonight again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually was having a moment of panic because um, when I was sitting in the car waiting for you to come back from taking pictures, it said that the Aurora chance was even stronger for Saturday night. And I thought, oh no, what is my husband going to do? He's going to force me to be up all night again, two nights in a row. The weather predictions for tonight are completely cloudy and covered, so... That's a God thing. Even if, even if the aurora is strong tonight, we wouldn't be going out shooting it, so. Yeah. If I had planned on it, I would have taken a nap today. So. Right. That's true. 
but yeah, I don't think we're going to do much tonight other than maybe go get some bridge pictures and hang out at kinda, our cozy campsite. Yeah, just relax here. I mean, this is pretty, pretty nice. I think I waited too long. Uh oh. All the texture in the sky is gone. Yeah, it's definitely getting cloudy. Wall of gray. <laughs> I'll set up and take some shots and then I'll we'll see Sure. That yeah, you never know. The truth about weekend trips is that they can feel a bit rushed. So much time is spent driving to and from the destination that there isn't a lot of time left over to relax. It's easy to come home from weekend trips feeling more exhausted than when you left. Rather than continuing to run at full speed, sometimes it's important to have recovery days or even weekends where you don't do as much. Allow yourself to sleep in, savor your campsite, read a book. Sometimes just getting away from the busyness of life and connecting with your travel companions is more important than pushing yourself to fully explore your destination. Make sure you join us next time as we tour some lesser known sites in Michigan's Upper Peninsula and discover a unique vantage point of Mackinac Bridge. Thanks for watching and until next time, go out and live your best life one adventure at a time.